Hey there, I'm James Thompson. Before I dive into my story, do me a solid and hit that subscribe button. Trust me, you won't want to miss what's coming. I'm this 35-year-old high school English teacher living what I thought was the dream in suburban bliss. It all kicked off on what should have been the happiest day of my year, my seventh wedding anniversary with Sarah. Babe, you didn't have to do all this, Sarah said, shuffling into the kitchen in her silk robe, her blonde hair, a mess. Come on, it's our special day. Least I could do, I replied, sliding a plate in front of her. She smiled, but something seemed off. Her blue eyes, usually sparkling, looked distant. I chalked it up to her being tired from all those late nights at work. So, any big plans for today? She asked, picking at her food. Well, I've got a few surprises up my sleeve, but first I gotta head to school. These kids won't teach themselves about Shakespearean sonnets. The day dragged on, and I found myself checking my phone more often than usual. No messages from Sarah. Strange, considering it was our anniversary. After school, I rushed to pick up Sarah's gift, this gorgeous sapphire necklace that cost me three months' savings. But for Sarah, worth every penny. I swung by home to change into my best suit. Sarah wasn't there, but she'd left a note saying she'd meet me at the restaurant. At the restaurant, a swanky place way out of our usual league, I waited nervously. Sarah was late, which wasn't like her. When she finally arrived, sorry I'm late, she said, sliding into her seat. Work was crazy. No worries, I replied, trying to hide my concern. You look amazing. We ordered drinks, and I tried to lighten the mood. Remember our first anniversary, that little Italian place where the waiter spilled red wine all over my white shirt? Sarah chuckled, but it sounded forced. Yeah, that was something. Everything okay at work? I asked, hoping to get her to open up. Oh, you know, just busy, she replied vaguely. We've got this big project coming up. I nodded, not entirely convinced. Well, if you need to talk about it, I'm here. Sarah smiled, but it didn't reach her eyes. Thanks, James. I appreciate that. As we finished our main course, I decided it was time for the gift. I pulled out the small velvet box and slid it across the table. Happy anniversary, Sarah. She opened it, her eyes widening at the sight of the sapphire necklace. James, it's... it's beautiful. But it must have cost a fortune. You're worth it, I said, reaching for her hand. She let me take it, but her fingers were limp in mine. I... I didn't get you anything, she said, her voice barely above a whisper. Hey, don't worry about it, I said, trying to reassure her. Have Back home, Sarah excused herself quickly, claiming a headache. As I lay in bed alone, listening to the sound of the shower running, I couldn't shake the feeling that our perfect life was starting to crack at the seams. The next evening, Sarah suggested we go out for dinner again, said she wanted to make up for being so distant on our anniversary. We ended up at this fancy Italian place downtown. White tablecloths, candlelight, the works. But the romantic atmosphere felt hollow, forced. Sarah kept fidgeting with her napkin, barely touching her lingine. James, Sar said, her voice tight. I can't do this anymore. My fork clattered against the plate. Do what? This us? She finally looked at me, her eyes cold and determined. I'm leaving you. The world stopped. I couldn't breathe. What, Sarah, if this is about yesterday, I'm sorry if I... It's not about yesterday. She cut me off. It's about the last few years. I'm unhappy, James. I have been for a long time. But he's... Uh, why didn't you say anything? We could have worked on it, gone to counseling, or... Because it's not something we can fix, she snapped. Then softer. There's someone else. The floor dropped out from under me. Someone? Who? Sarah took a deep breath. His name is Michael Blackwood. He's a director at my firm. How long? I managed to choke out. Six months? Sarah replied, not even having the decency to look ashamed. Why? It was all I could think to ask. Sarah's eyes hardened. Because he can give me the life I want, James, the life you never could. I'm tired of living paycheck to paycheck, of vacations in budget motels. Michael has money, connections. He can take me places. So that's it? Seven years of marriage and you're throwing it away for... for what? 
a bigger house, fancier vacations. It's not just about the money, Sarah hissed, leaning forward. It's about ambition, drive, things you've never had. Face it, James, you're content to stay a high school teacher forever, living in our little suburban box. I want more. So, all those late nights at the office? I started. Sarah nodded. Sometimes we were working, sometimes not. I can't believe this, I muttered. More to myself than to her. Seven years, Sarah, seven years of memories, of building a life together, and you're just going to throw it all away? I'm not throwing it away, she snapped. I'm moving on to something better, something you could never give me. Suddenly, it hit me. You chose this place on purpose, didn't you? A public spot so I couldn't make a scene? Sarah at least had the grace to look slightly ashamed. I thought it would be easier this way. Easier? I laughed, a hollow sound. Yeah, I'm sure it's real easy for you, Sarah. You've had months to prepare for this. Me? I'm finding out my whole life is a lie over some overpriced pasta. James, please, Sarah started, but I cut her off. No, you don't get to James, please me. Not anymore. You want your fancy life with Michael? Fine, have it. I hope it's everything you dreamed of. I pulled out my wallet, threw some bills on the table. Enough to cover the bill, and then some. Consider it my parting gift. God knows I can't compete with your new man's wallet. The weeks after that night at the restaurant were a blur. I barely ate, barely slept. The thought of facing my students, of trying to teach them about love in Shakespeare's sonnets when my own love life had imploded was too much. I called in sick, then eventually took a leave of absence. My best friend Mike became my lifeline. He showed up at my place one day, took one look at the mess, both me and the apartment, and decided to take charge. As we sorted through the wreckage of my marriage, Mike gently suggested I see a therapist. You need to talk to someone. Dr. Patel, my therapist, became my guide through the storm of emotions, anger, betrayal, self-doubt. James, she said during one session, healing isn't linear. Some days will be better than others. The key is to keep moving forward. One day, while going through our financial records for the divorce proceedings... I stumbled upon something that made my blood run cold. Credit card statements showed charges for expensive hotels, designer boutiques, even a weekend getaway to the Bahamas, all on our joint account. She was using our money to fund her affair, I told Mike, my voice shaking with anger. Our anniversary savings, Mike. The money we were putting aside for a family. She blew it all on her fling with Mr. Moneybags. Mike's face darkened. That's low, man, even for her. But the hits kept coming. I made the mistake of checking Sarah's social media one night. There she was, plastered all over Instagram, living it up with Michael. Champagne at rooftop bars, shopping sprees at Gucci, vacations in the Maldives. Each photo was like a knife twisting in my gut. Look at her, I spat, shoving my phone at Mike. Two months ago, she was my wife. Now she's arm candy for this rich asshole. Mike gently took my phone away. You gotta stop torturing yourself, James. Block her. Focus on you. Then, out of the blue, I got a call from Tom, a former student who was now interning at Sarah's company. Mr. Thompson, it's Tom Reeves. I... I think there's something you should know. We met at a coffee shop. Tom looked nervous, fidgeting with his latte. What's going on, Tom? I asked. He took a deep breath. It's about Sarah and Mr. Blackwood, their relationship. It's causing problems at work. There are rumors, you know, about favoritism, about how quickly Sarah's been promoted. I felt a mix of emotions, curiosity, anger, a twisted sense of satisfaction. Go on, Tom lowered his voice. Some of the other interns, they've been talking. Apparently, Mr. Blackwood has a history. Sarah's not the first, you know, my mind reeled. Not the first what, Tom? Affair, he whispered. He has a reputation for pursuing his subordinates. There was a lawsuit a few years back, but it was settled quietly. I sat back, stunned. So Sarah? Tom nodded. She might just be his latest conquest. As I dug deeper, a pattern emerged. Michael Blackwood, the successful, charming executive, had a dark side. He used his position to manipulate young, ambitious women. Promise them the world, shower them with gifts, 
then discard them when he got bored. The information Tom gave me burned in my mind for weeks. Part of me wanted to blast Sarah and Michael's misdeeds all over social media to watch their carefully crafted image crumble, but another part was just tired. Tired of letting their betrayal dictate my life. With that weight off my shoulders, I focused on rebuilding my life. I threw myself into writing, pouring my pain and growth into a series of short stories. To my surprise, they resonated not just with my students, but with readers online, too. Mr. Thompson, your story about the man who found his voice after losing his echo, it's beautiful. Jenny, one of my students, told me after our class one day. Her words gave me the courage to keep writing, to keep healing through my art. As spring turned to summer, I found myself smiling more, laughing easier. I even started dating again. Nothing serious, just coffee here and there. But then I met Olivia, the new English teacher at our school. Months passed and life settled into a new normal. Then, out of the blue, Mike called me. You're not going to believe this, he said. Sarah's company just had a massive shakeup. Michael's been fired for ethics violations, and Sarah's been let go too. It's all over the industry news. Looks like your tip sparked a full investigation. They uncovered a whole web of misconduct. Michael's facing multiple lawsuits. I nodded, processing the information. And Sarah? Mike's voice softened. She's caught in the fallout. Her reputation's in tatters. I should have felt triumphant. But all I felt was a strange sense of peace. Thanks for letting me know, Mike. A week later, I got a text from an unknown number. It was Sarah. James, please, I need to talk to you. Everything's fallen apart. Michael's fled the country, leaving me to deal with this mess alone. I know I hurt you, but please, I have no one else to turn to. I stared at the message for a long time. Part of me, a small, vindictive part, wanted to revel in her misery. But that wasn't who I was, who I wanted to be. I typed out a simple reply. I'm sorry you're going through this, Sarah, but I can't be the one to help you. I wish you the best. Months later, I found myself at a small bookstore signing copies of my newly published collection of short stories. As I interacted with readers, their eyes shining with emotion as they told me how my words had touched them, I felt a profound sense of gratitude. As the event wound down, Olivia appeared at my side, squeezing my hand. Ready to go, bestseller? I looked at her, then at the line of people still waiting to talk to me, then back at the book in my hands. In that moment... I realized something profound. The best revenge wasn't exposing Sarah and Michael's misdeeds. It wasn't watching their carefully constructed world crumble. No, the best revenge was this. The life I'd built from the wreckage they'd left behind. The stories I'd written. The students I'd inspired. The love I'd found again. I had not only survived their betrayal. I had thrived. The story of James and Sarah has come to an end. Now I have a question for you. If you were in James's position, would you have anonymously reported Sarah and Michael's misconduct? Or would you have exposed them publicly for the satisfaction of seeing them face immediate consequences? What do you think is the most ethical way to handle such a betrayal? If you enjoyed this story and want to hear more like it, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. Your support helps us continue bringing you these compelling narratives of love, betrayal, and redemption. Thanks for watching.